everybody to this installment of CNC Workbench. This installment is about basic tool sets, feeds and speeds, and machining our simple project. In this episode today, we will be talking about basic tool sets, the overview of feeds and speeds, steps to machining your project. So sit back and enjoy yourself as we go into the shop to talk about tools and machining our project. I would like to thank our sponsors, Tencraft Company, Next Wave Automation, Crystalac, and Silverback Woodworking. Welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit about tools here and some of the tools that we're going to be using in this project and some of the tools that I think that are good for a starter or beginner to have. So we're going to just kind of go through these a little bit at a time here. So the first thing is, is the collets themselves. The collets themselves are the thing that hold your bit into the spindle or your router or whatever. And I recommend that you have probably three sizes. You have a quarter or an eighth inch, quarter inch, and half inch. On collet sizes, I recommend a beginner to have three sizes, an eighth, a quarter, and a half inch. Um, some of your routers won't be able to take a half inch, which is fine, but it just limits you to some of the bits that you can use. Um, I use predominantly white side bits and Amana bits, which I get from one of my sponsors, um, Ken Craft. I would say 85% of my bits are white side. And they have a really nice uh, carving set here that you can buy. And it has a conical bit, two sizes, eighth and quarter. And conical bits are these tapered bits. These are conical bits. They're tapered from quarter inch all the way to a sixteenth for this particular one and then it's a ball on the end. These are used for carving a lot. The next bit that you probably want to have is a straight bit. A straight bit is for I would say the most of your cutting. I like a quarter inch up cut that works good, but there's also a down cut. And what it does, instead of bringing the chip up toward the router, it actually ejects the chip toward the base. Depending on what you're doing, it's going to be a different situation. The next thing that I think that you should have is something to cut your spoil board with. And a spoil board is a board that you have attached on the base of your CNC machine so you're not going to cut into the actual base of the machine. I have a spoil board cutter bit that is this one right here and it is designed specifically for cutting your spoil board and this happens to be replaceable inserts which is kind of nice uh, it's kind of expensive to start with, but unlike a straight bit, which is this one, when I chip or doll the bit, I don't have to go out and spend $70 for another bit. So that's to, to level your spoil board so that your gantry or your x-axis is perpendicular or parallel, I mean parallel to, so that your gantry or your x-axis is parallel to the base that you're cutting, which is your spoil board. So that's pretty important. I also sometimes use this spoil board cutter to get rid of a lot of material if it's a big surface. The next thing you're going to probably want to have is some kind of V-bit. 
and I have three different types here. These three types of V-bits, insert, insert, and just a regular V-bit. I recommend that you have a 90 degree V-bit and a 60 degree V-bit. Um, these uh, are going to be used for engraving like signs, um, lettering, and stuff like that. I got the insertable ones again because if I mess an insert up it's only 10 bucks, 15 bucks. I mess that one up it's a little bit more expensive. So we have a um, straight cut bit, we have a conical ball nose bit, we have a v-groove bit, so the next thing that I would recommend is a ball nose bit. And a ball nose bit is basically, this is an upcut ball nose. This is going to be used for finer detail. Not as fine as the 16th taper, but fine detail. So those are the bits that I would say that you would want to start with. And uh, obviously your uh, bits are going to grow from there. Again, like I said, my arsenal of bits is mostly made up of white side and I do have some mana stuff too. So, and both of those are handled by Kencraft, so it makes it real handy for me. Um, some of the other bits, or the, one of the bits that we're going to use in this project is a bowl bit. And this bowl bit is kind of like a round nose bit with, with it being flat on the bottom here. Um, do you have to have this bit to do this project? No, you could do this project just with a regular round nose bit, like maybe a three-eighths or something like that, or even as big as an inch, which is fine. Then you could go into the corners if you wanted the corners a little tighter and go in with like a quarter-inch round nose. That's fine. It just This just does it faster, and it takes one tool change or a couple tool changes out of the picture. So, in this project, we're going to use basically... A couple bits. I'm going to use the bowl bit in this project. We are going to use a straight cut bit and then we are going to use a v-carve bit. So these will be the three bits that we use. I will put the numbers of these particular bits, they're all white side bits, I will put the white side numbers up there on the written portion of this. The last thing I want to talk about is feeds and speeds. This is kind of a controversial thing. A lot of people will ask questions about it and everybody's got an opinion about it. Um, if you go to the Amana Tool site they have a feed and speed recommended chart for their bits. You can use that to go across the board and use the same ideas for white side bits. I use those as a starting point. Traditionally, as far as speed goes, sometimes if you have a router, you only got one speed, so you don't really have a choice about it. But if you got a variable speed router or a a spindle, then you can control the speed. I particularly have a spindle and I usually run oh, about 10 to 12,000 RPMs for I would say the vast majority of the bits unless they're really big. The thing you gotta watch about bits is the diameter is a great influence on how fast you have it go and how fast you feed it. Because what really is important is what they call a chip load. The chip load is 
how fast the cutter can cut and eject the chip. And what I usually do is I go by sound for the very fact if it's a real high squeal sound, it's way too fast. And if it sounds like it's lumbering along, it's probably too slow. And I also go what the chips look like. I, I don't want the chip to be a real fine sawdust. I like to have the chip that, for lack of a better word, it kind of looks like a plane cutting off a, a nice curl, but it's not a curl. It's just a little part of that curl, but it's a definite chip. It's not dust. Obviously, the bigger the cutter, the bigger the chip. But I look for chips, not dust. Dust means that I'm cutting it too fast. It's creating a lot of heat. It's going to be hard on the bit and hard on your machine. The other thing is, is sharp bits, sharp bits, sharp bits. I can't say more about that. A sharp bit will give you a much better cut and it's much easier on your machine. So that's kind of what my analysis and kind of knowledge about bits are. Again, what we're going to use in this project is a V-carved bit, a straight bit, and a bowl bit.